Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you today? Man, feeling like an old man. Like, yeah. That's how I'm feeling. Yeah, that happens about your age. <laughs> it does. I, remember, I remember those days. Yeah. yeah, it gets better after this, right? No. <laughs> oh, that's not how it goes. No, but it does kind of level off. Does you it? just you just get used to feeling old. <laughs> well, I ain't used to it yet. I'll put it that way. So. I was I was somewhere a couple of days ago, week ago maybe, um, and I was walking in position that I was walking towards a mirror. And I like I noticed myself in the mirror, and I was like, "Man, when did I start to look old?" <laughs> yeah, well, you're not all the way there yet. You're not hunched over. You're not using the cane. No, no. nothing like that. But. I really see it in photographs because, like, you don't you don't notice as, as much when you see me in person because natural light is just different. Yeah. Um. Than than photography, but the way the photography works because my hair is mostly a transparent really <laughs> um the it it looks really washed out it looks like i just have nothing but white hair yeah i've actually still got a fair bit of black in it yeah and you can see it when you're in person but you cannot see it in photographs yeah yeah and it's no, very I've strange seen, I, looking i'm, I'm never, like what the hell's never wrong put with these together but that you're right because i've seen you in pictures and i've never put together what the difference is but you're right that is what the difference is yeah is there's still there's still just a little bit of tone to it in real life but mm -hmm. like pictures don't have that at all yeah all it does so. is reflect the because the yeah the other color is black it just absorbs light it doesn't reflect anything the, but yeah. the white does oh yeah it does <laughs> and uh so yeah oh well I, there's a little bit of pepper still <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah. you can't see it in a photograph and every time i look at a photograph i'm like what's going on here because the person i see in photographs is not the person i see in the mirror in the morning <laughs> right <laughs> oh i know uh, that feeling too so Mine's but. not the hair, though. No, I, I pulled my back out getting out of the car today. <laughs> so <laughs> I've definitely got the my old man's feelings right now. Well, my neck is sore, but I, that's because of the core workout I did yesterday. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Strain and <laughs> pull my head up and one more, like, toe touch or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. Actually, doing that over and over and over again, that's really what it was. Yeah. And... Now I, I also hurt like everywhere where abdominal muscles yeah. attach to bone. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> like around my hips, around my lower rib cage, like everything. I I, I knew what I was getting into, but now you did it to yourself. Yeah, I did. It'll be worth it in the end. That's what people keep telling me. I've been <laughs> I've been saying that to myself for like many years now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not seeing it, but <laughs> next time. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, I feel like the end is near. So <laughs> The end is near? Yeah. Which end? I don't know. The end of anything. Something. I don't know. It definitely feels like the world's on fire right now. Uh, hmm, I don't know. Um, it, it looks to me like uh, things are pl finally playing out like they were always going to in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they made the mistake of pulling their best forces off of their defensive line to do this dramatic last ditch effort push. So we into... hadn't really talked about that. So where yeah, is? We did. Well, I know we did. Uh, yeah, but that's been two weeks ago now. Yeah. Uh, so where is, has anything changed on that? Um, as far as like the invasion is concerned. No, no, they're stuck. Like. The, yeah, they're stuck. They're just gonna die there. Really. So they're like stranded there. They like they can't even like retreat. I mean, yeah, there's nowhere they can go. Oh wow, <clears throat> man, that's Re got to, retreating that's... is a death sentence from there because they're retreating through hostile territory. Yeah, they don't have the strength to push forward. My understanding is that they've lost half at least of their military force that they went in there with. So, but they are holding some territory, right? I mean, some. Yeah, like a, it, I don't, it, I don't it, know. I'm asking, like, is it yeah, like a little I mean, small they, town or? They're not holding anything that matters. 
Yeah, but I'm just curious. Like, like, is it like a town or? I, I mean, like I suppose county, it might maybe? just be countryside or countryside. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm trying to get a feel for. Yeah. Like, just... I mean, no, I think it's like they they hold a couple of maybe little towns or villages. Okay. Yeah. Um. But no way to maintain them, and no way. Oh to... no, no, they don't have anywhere. They didn't have anywhere close to the force to hold territory in Russia when they went in. Yeah. And yeah. if they've lost half of what their... were they expecting to were they I mean, I guess we don't really know. But I mean, mm-hmm. I, you got to figure like they had to have went in there with the expectation of we're going to take this area and then like, like build a route to maintain it. Like No, I think that they just thought I, I, I think as much as anything, it was a PR move to continue to get Western funding. Um, and they also say that they wanted to put pressure on Putin. Uh, that, you know, show that they're not so safe in inside Russia or whatever, and, and maybe get the populace to rise up against them, which that's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, they probably reinforce his rule by doing this yeah. just because Putin is seen as the strong man. Yeah. And like, so the fact that the country was invaded doesn't jeopardize his position. I don't think it strengthens it. Yeah. The um, whole rally to the flag thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I think in terms of some kind of actual, like strategic plan, such as it is, (laughs) is I, I, I subscribe to the theory that they thought that they would be able to capture the nuclear plant, uh, in Kursk. Okay. Um, and if they weren't able to catch it, capture it to at least get close enough that they could damage it and maybe cause some kind of nuclear disaster inside <laughs> Russia. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's what they that's, were really after, but they didn't get there. Yeah. Well, I mean, and now they're trapped because that's like, that would be, that would be pretty bad for everybody involved. Like, oh, the yeah. last thing we want, I mean, even me as an American here, like I don't want to see a nuclear incident anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that it would be good for Ukraine's image in the world no. if they did, if they actually did that. But remember, they've been shelling their own nuclear plant in Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia, yeah, exactly. So who knows? Um, and it may that may not have been the goal. The goal may actually have just been to we're going to capture, gonna capture and hold some territory in Russia so that we can trade, yeah. but they didn't have nearly enough of a force to hold territory in Russia. Yeah. Um, and the worst bit about it in terms of for Ukraine is that they pulled some of their best troops off of their defensive line in Ukraine to do this. Yeah. And now Russia's moving fast. Oh, really? Like they were capturing a little bit of territory, a little bit of territory. Now it's looking like, some of these lines are just going to collapse. Wow. And that may not have been the case if they had left their troops yeah. on the defensive line. Wow. So I think they just shot themselves in the foot. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they weren't winning anyway, but... <laughs> right. This sped things up a little bit. I think so. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but... um, I I mean, now Zelensky's talking about presenting his his victory plan to Biden soon <laughs> really and like i don't know the level of delusion that that takes at this point for anybody to to believe, believe this yeah but plenty of people do yeah i mean the power of propaganda is pretty amazing yeah we keep seeing it over and over again um if you can control the message well enough then people have no sense yeah well and, and as far as with us here in the states with it like, I mean, we're really just going off reports and stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we're like on the ground able to really, I mean, you can get reports from people on the ground, but you're still just kind of taking people's word at it. Well, one of the reports is that Sergei Lavrov made a kind of an oblique reference that about, we believe that our oceans will protect us, but they won't. Oh yeah. Talking about us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess the the amount of involvement that we have in this war and the, what we've contributed to Ukraine's fight against Russia 
is wearing on the Russians at some at some point they can no longer ignore that we're a part of this. Yeah. And we are a part of that. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's that's and that's what's so irritating to me as an American. Like, I don't want to be any part of this. Like, I don't want war yeah. with Russia. Like I mean, I think that they want to just bring a conclusion to this war without getting into an active war with the US. Yeah. Like an open war with the I mean, they're already in an active war with the US, but in an yeah. open war with the US. Yeah. Um but at some point they're going to give up on that. Yeah. In the same way that they've now given up on uh negotiations as a way to end this. Yeah. So are they not negotiating? Oh, no. They they've said after the invasion of Russia, they but were like, was... yeah, the time for negotiating is done now. We're Yeah. We're no longer waiting for you guys to come to your senses. We're just going to put an end to this. Oh, wow. So it's not good. And there was a huge attack on the um the uh, electrical infrastructure, the energy infrastructure in Ukraine really? um, just a few days ago, I think. Oh, wow. Biggest attack so far. And again, you know, like we're going into fall. Yeah. Like it's going <laughs> to start getting cold start there. It's going to start getting cold, yep. Um, and I don't approve of that kind of tactic. I mean, I, I've no, been uh, critical not. of it with Israel, and I'm critical of it with uh, with Russia as well. But you understand the point. Yeah, like that's, I mean, this is war, like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, so. But I don't, I don't see how it ends with Zelensky still in office. No, there's no way Russia can allow him to stay. I mean, that's, yeah, even once they start negotiating, like, that's going to be part of the negotiation. It has to be. Yeah, your regime's out. Yeah, exactly. Which is where the real problem is as far as us, because, then who do you put in? Mm-hmm. Like because we, what will we accept versus what will Russia accept? Yeah. Well, and on that note, like we're probably involved in another coup attempt in um, Venezuela. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Oh wait, no. I, so the I heard a little bit about that. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're so I haven't really kept up with it that much. I know the claims in the media is. Is that it was a, a bunk election? That yeah, well, that's always the claim. That's always well. That's what I know. So, I mean, what do you know? Is it is it really? I mean, I don't I don't know anything really. Okay. I didn't know if you had how much you had looked into um, it. It's a uh, a man who's like Maduro, who's in power. Um, if he's faking an election, he's not likely to fake it being as close. Yeah. As it was. Okay. Yeah. That's what I would say. I mean, yeah. you know, the the Kims in North Korea, it's always 98% <laughs> whatever. Right. Um, I remember Saddam Hussein, it was like 99%. Yeah, like. so this was like, it was like, I don't remember what the numbers were exactly, but it was like 53, 46 or something like that oh, towards yeah. Maduro is the, what they were claiming. And yeah. then he asked the, the courts to go in and you'd say, well, you know, he controls the courts too. So is that legitimate? I don't know. Yeah. But the only people that are claiming that it was a landslide the other way, they're, they're talking two to one votes for yeah. the opposition is yeah. the opposition. Yeah. And the opposition, um, candidate was the only candidate that didn't participate in the judicial review. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's another one of those things where they're, you know, the opposition claims that they won the election, but then they won't take part in anything related to it afterwards. Yeah. And so then they can claim that they're not being treated fairly, but they've been given the opportunity to participate in this. They just chosen not to, yeah. or that same kind of thing where sometimes you, it happens even before the election. So the opposition knows that they're going to win the election, but they refuse to participate in the election because they know <laughs> that they'll be treated unfairly. And so why even bother showing up to the polls? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that then, is you, the idea. then you have no case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the that's how it is right now as well, is that, okay, maybe if you had participated in the judicial review, you might be able to make a case. But since you, you were the only candidate that chose not to participate in the judicial review— where do you go from here? Yeah, right. You Revolution. Appeal, you, you appeal to the Americans. That's what yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, um, it's time to get in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I don't have a lot of detail about that. I just I think it's it's probably it's probably, you know, a manufactured crisis yeah. to borrow a term. <laughs> All right. Um, we had the DNC uh, convention. 
Yeah. So, so how much of that did you see? Uh, pretty much zero. So I I'll literally, just, to me, it's just another pep rally. Yeah. I, <laughs> if I had been in town, I probably would have watched some of it. Like I did the RNC. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I didn't because I was, I was out of town. I did manage to catch Biden's speech because mm-hmm. I got in late and it was on one uh, on Monday night. Yeah. And, um, and I watched it. I mean, they had him on the good stuff. Like I'll yeah. say that. <laughs> well, I, you haven't, um, probably haven't gotten to the point cause you said you're only about halfway through the the podcast I put out Monday. Yeah. Um, but I did um, have a clip of Hillary Clinton from the her speech in the, at the convention. Oh, did you? That yeah. I, I threw in there because I just absolutely had to. Yeah. Um, so I've heard some clips, but I, I, didn't, I didn't really pay. So I guess they really got everybody, all the people they don't like out of the way the first night then. Hillary Clinton. Um, um, all the uh, people who doesn't like? The DNC. Like... Oh, I'm no, trying to th- I yeah. think that the... Like, I mean, they had Biden the first night and Hillary Clinton. Like, they're definitely distancing themselves from both of them. Oh, no, no. That's how you open the rally. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you got to you gotta get your strong stuff at the beginning or people stop paying attention. Maybe. No, I don't think it's that the DNC doesn't like them. I mean, Biden, you had to have him Well, a- he's at the, the sitting president. Yeah. yeah. Um, the... Clintons, I think it's it's to it's to rally the troops, not to get them out of the way. I think. I don't know, man. Hillary was just so unpopular. Haven't you ever made a mixtape? <laughs> maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's been a well, long not, time. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's I mean, I think point. I have. But it's been a while. I mean, it, it probably wasn't a tape for you. It's it was probably a CD, a CD but it was still a mix. A CD, like you know, yeah. you start with it. You start with a real banger. Yeah. Um, and Hillary Clinton is a banger. No, no, no. Know. But then you take it up from there. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's all rise. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not all rise. Then you, if you <laughs> listen to High Fidelity, then you take it down a notch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, well, I'm not going to go into what he says is the reason. But, yeah. um, no, I, I think that uh, having Hillary Clinton at the beginning is to get people fired up. And my mom told me that uh, Hillary Clinton got the most applause or, like, the loudest applause of any speaker for, oh. like, the whole convention. That's interesting. I mean, like I said, I didn't watch any of it, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I just know how unpopular Hillary was when she ran. So <laughs> no, she was unpopular among the regular people. She wasn't unpopular among the Democrats. I know Democrats quite a, love her. I knew plenty of Democrats that didn't well, love her. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that out there. But the, but that's just the me, establishment just Democrats. People I talk to, you know. Though, yeah, I mean, yeah. no, the establishment, the party yeah. establishment loves the Clintons. Oh, uh, that's probably true. Um. Uh, so no, I didn't, I didn't really pay any attention to it though. Yeah. No. But um, I mean, Kamala and Walls have said some things, sort of. They're finally, supposed to. That, so so they're supposed to have a joint interview tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I thought that he was interviewing her. Is that not the plan anymore? Oh, is that what it is? So I I've that, only that was the original plan that I heard is that they were going to have her first sit down interview, and the person who was going to conduct the interview was Walls. Oh, that's not what I heard. So okay, I don't that know. may have changed. That probably they got at least some pushback for that <laughs> stupid <night>. idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, my understanding at least was that they were um, just going into the interview together. Okay. Like, as a joint interview, they can't even like turn her loose to be by herself. In um, a prepared interview, <laughs> which is already probably <laughs> scripted. Yeah. Uh, or at least the questions are known. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Um, I mean, it's wild. It, it's you feel like at some point she's going to have to speak, and oh, no, I she, really she's got to. The media is not going to allow her to just like get by. Not not. Are you sure, dude? They're already clamoring about it. Like it's mm, how much pressure are they really going to put on it? That that's a fair question. Because but, the re- but the whole point but it's coming up even it's through not, most of the media, the primary purpose of this election is to prevent Donald Trump from being president again. And whatever they've got to do to do that. I mean, but uh, yeah, it but, seems like they would have to get some kind of pushback from their audience at some point. Like, hey, you know, like I want to vote for this woman, but I have absolutely no idea what she wants to do. And yeah. even though I don't want Donald Trump, it's kind of important to me to know what the person that I do vote for wants to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> but maybe well. not. I mean, there's there's certainly a... a a very hardcore group that doesn't care. Yeah. No, I mean, that exists for sure. 
but but i mean it is still a trade that the media does with with the democrats as far as like access versus you know uh favorable coverage yeah and right now they're given the favorable coverage but they're not getting the other end of that bargain Hmm. they're not getting the access yeah um well there's some truth in that because having those interviews does drive their numbers and exactly yeah Mm -hmm. Um, and just to contrast that like trump is talking to everybody like like, trump (laughs) never stops talking and we all know that we know that's who he is so like like sometimes i wish he would yeah what what, what (laughs) stop talking oh stop talking yeah (laughs) all right but but he is out there doing media like Mm -hmm. and hostile media like i said i mean he came and saw us at the lp convention like yeah i I don't think he realized how hostile that was gonna be that (laughs) that may be true um but he's definitely walked into plenty that he knew were gonna be hostile so okay well i mean as long as we're talking about him now anyway we may as well talk about the the news of the week, I guess. Yep. Go <laughs> yeah. ahead. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure people have heard, but um, but Bobby Kennedy um, like dropped. I don't know if dropped out of the race is really right, but mm-hmm. um, has endorsed Trump is and and start and start at least the process of taking the self off the ballots. Um, accepts in the swing states. No, no, no. Other way around. Um, he's he's getting off of the ballot in the states that are toss ups. Okay. And he's staying on the ballot in the strong red states and the strong blue states. Gotcha. So I would Trying still be able spoiler. to vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the state, because there's no question that the Republicans going to win here. This is a yeah solidly red state. So he will not leave the ballot here. Yeah. Um, does that mean I'm still going to vote for him? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, essentially, he said, I have no interest in being the president now. Yeah. And so, well, so I don't know. Some... That probably means that I don't vote for anybody yeah. for the president again. I'm actually kind of sickened by the whole thing. Like, it's the it's the worst kind of politicking to me. It's just like this weird bribe. Like, hey, um, I won't offer any challenge to you if you put me uh, in an important position in your administration, which is... Which, uh, while I understand what you're saying, that that is like I, it's just a dirty game. But at the same time, that that is the game, and that that's kind of almost what you want. Like, I mean, I, I would have to ask you because you've been a big RFK fan, and I am too. But like, don't you want him in the administration if Trump wins? It depends on where what his position is. I mean, it's well. I mean, they've already said it's, what it's. It's another. Be. It could potentially be just another elite guy that thinks he knows how you should live your life and is yeah. given control over a sector of your life that he thinks that he knows better. Yeah. I mean, that's fair because uh, in, <laughs> so it is, um, health is one that is where they're wanting to put him. Like, yeah. um, and so you're not wrong about that. Um, I mean, it I is, mean, could it be beneficial? Yeah, it could be, but it could be, it it could result in whatever that position is having more power than we want it to. Yeah. No, I 100% agree with that. Um, and the guy's a Democrat anyway. So mm-hmm. that he already kind of, I mean, Democrats tend to lean towards authoritarianism. Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> certainly towards the idea that government can help you. Yeah. With, with the right kind of, with the right person and the right kind of power, government can help you. Yeah. And that, that mentality scares me. Yeah. So I definitely agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Tulsi dropped out and endorsed Trump as well. Um, well. Tulsi didn't drop out of anything, or not drop out, I guess, but like has has uh, thrown her name behind Trump. Yeah, I'm not surprised at that. She's been kind of shilling for him for a while. Yeah, that's what I understand. It's it is it's just weird though. It's definitely strange that I mean he's picking up some Democrats in in this campaign. Well, the Democrats have created their own problem here because these are two people who have been Democrats at least for a long time. I think I think RFKJ's a lifelong Democrat. I don't know yeah. that Tulsi's lifelong Democrat, but it's been there for a while. Though. But yeah, if she had um, run for re-election. It would have been on the Democrat ticket. She probably yeah. would have won, actually, too, yeah. in Hawaii. But maybe not. I don't know. There were already... I The the CNN followers were already kind of probably turning a little bit against Tulsi. Yeah. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that the, the Democrat Party ostracized and went after both of these people. Yeah. 
they, they could have still been, I mean, I imagine that without that, um, attack by the Democrat party, that these two people would still be supporting Democrats. I mean, that's probably true. And in um, fact, that's almost all, all RFKJ talked about in his speech where he announced all this yeah. was how the Democrats had gone after him legally and tried to push him off the ballot uh, everywhere. Just and, been relentless. Yeah, yeah, and how corrupt they were. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know that the Democrat Party is any more corrupt than the Republican Party. They yeah. could be. Yeah. They might be less corrupt than the Republican Party. I don't really know. I think both <laughs> of them are terribly corrupt. Yeah. But um, I think that without that... <laughs> without the assault or what he at least perceived as an assault on him personally, yeah. I doubt he would have backed out and supported Donald Trump. Maybe, maybe not. That's definitely, I don't know. The whole, the whole situation is interesting to me. Um, and you've got to believe that, that Tulsi's gunning for some kind of position in the administration. Um, and I don't know. I just like to think how cool it would be if they made her secretary of state. Yeah. that Well, that could be interesting. I mean, she has her problems on foreign policy, too. She does, too. But, man, isn't she so much better than anybody we've had? And well, She's certainly better than I'll, Anthony Blinken. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I mean, like, when was... So I'll ask you because you're more familiar. Like, when was the last time we had a strong secretary of state? That you would support. Oh, that I would support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I thought that was, you like perked up for a minute. It was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. I don't know. I can't think of one. I mean, um, uh, yeah. So she yeah, could, so she could be the one. best secretary of state of her lifetime. Could Potentially. Be. I mean, like I said, we're, we don't know because. Yeah. Well, she's, it's not that she didn't believe in the terror war. She just believed in maintaining the side that we were that we started on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But at this point, that's good. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's certainly an improvement. I, yeah. um, no, and, and I agree. She's not perfect on that stuff, but I mean, it would, it would definitely be interesting to, to see how that world plays out. I mean, it would be nice to see a secretary of state that actually, um, stressed or emphasized diplomacy instead of war. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like she would at least do that. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I, I think that's, um, but I, I don't think, I don't think that she's influential enough to, to, to get that position. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you're probably right on that, but, mm -hmm. but it's interesting to consider. Yeah. I mean, he's got to put somebody there. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know, um, come on Rand Paul. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let that be your libertarian and put him there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. A libertarian, in the secretary of state position would be incredible. No. I'm not holding my breath though. No, no. Uh, well, I, I, it is an interesting kind of political realignment, but one of the things that it's it, to me seems to illustrate is that, that, um, hate is more effective than love at building a coalition. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, both sides really on, of this, this political realignment are built around, opposition to the other side not really shared yeah ideology yeah yeah because yeah that definitely <laughs> shines with these last two yeah. endorsements hate trump's love <laughs> i guess <laughs> right <clears throat> so. or hating trump trump's love or something like that yeah there's definitely a slogan in there yeah <laughs> uh so I, I you know it's it's interesting to watch but I don't, I don't know what it really means. Um, I mean, I, I certainly would like to see a political realignment. And I, I heard somebody saying that essentially the realignment was all the people who were worried that they may get banned or censored for something they said on social media in the last five years versus those people that are lockstep with the regime. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, that really, that's a good point. Like that's really kind of where the lines are being drawn. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's certainly why Tulsi and RFKJ are on the other side now. Oh, without question. Um, if you and if you just kind of go along with everything that comes down from on high, I suppose you don't see the problem. You think that everybody's just complaining or paranoid or whatever if you haven't experienced it yourself. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we still have uh, videos that were kicked off of YouTube and will never return, <laughs> apparently, right. for yeah. us saying things that turned out to be true but aren't popular. Yeah, 
Exactly. And I don't know. In, in fact, that's a good transition, I think, right there yeah. um, to uh, the uh, founder of, of Telegram, Pavel Durov, uh, was arrested in France. Yeah. Because of Telegram. Yeah. Um, he, his, the charges are like complicity in a range of crimes, um, failure to provide the government with requested information about client community, his clients communications. Yeah. Um, because one of his big things about telegram is that it's in the end encryption. Yeah. And there is no backdoor and he can't unencrypt it either. It's, yeah. it's, just That's everything's encrypted. Idea. Like it's just um, because you, this is a guy who came out of Russia and was <laughs> trying to protect yeah. people's communications from that government. Yeah. Have you ever used Telegram? Yep. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I've never used it. I'm. I yeah. Might... Um, I use Telegram to communicate with my cousin in Switzerland. Okay. Well, yeah. I've I've heard that that um that they use it a lot in Europe. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very popular. yeah. In Europe, they were using it to call cabs and like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, uh, order food, <laughs> yeah. whatever it was. In in fact, before I went to Switzerland, my cousin told me I needed to download it, and he's like, "That's just the easiest way for us to communicate once you're here, because you can't depend on cell service, texting, and yeah. and so forth." But um, and also, you just kind of need it for everything here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if you need a ride, you use Telegram. If you yeah. need, you know, whatever they use it for everything. So. Okay. Um, so, they're so, trying, yeah. so they're trying to shut this down. Uh, or at least change it so they can have access to it. That's what they want. They want, um, uh, yeah, let me continue with the charges. Okay. So, yeah, yeah um, failure to provide the government with requested info about client communications, um, providing, essentially, this is, I, I couldn't entirely understand these charges. There are several of them related. Um, the best I could figure is that it was like providing cryptography without a license, without <laughs> government approval for, um, to encrypt these communications essentially. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but essentially they're just holding them responsible for having a, um, an encrypted communications platform that doesn't have a back door to allow governments to access yeah. the information. Yeah. Um, that they want. And of course this is an attack on everybody else too. You talk about a chilling effect. Yeah. You know, you've heard that word a lot recently or that expression a lot recently, but, um, yeah, this is a, it provides a chilling effect on other companies that you can literally go to jail and it's, he's already, it's cost him millions of dollars already to bail out in France and he's not allowed to leave the country. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, the rumor is, uh, that he came to France on the personal invitation to go to dinner with Emmanuel Macron. Oh, really? So that so Macron they lured him invited in. him to come to dinner and then arrested him when he arrived. Oh, wow. I hadn't heard that. I don't that's know if wild. that's true, but <laughs> that's wild. It, it honestly case, wouldn't surprise though. me because you know, we talk about, you remember, I don't know, what was a month or so ago, we were talking about the European elections and how Macron's party had not won the day. Yeah. Um, that another, uh, another liberal party had won. And then, uh, Marine Le Pen's, uh, conservative party ended up behind, uh, Macron's party, but Macron's party had lost, uh, had essentially come in second. They no longer had a majority. They, they lost a lot of, of, uh, lost a lot of ground and in influence. Yeah. Well, nothing has come of those elections, yeah. as far as I understand it. Yeah. What I mean by that is that the new government hasn't been allowed to take over. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, that they've essentially, that the Macron government has ignored the elections. <laughs> and just kind of persisted? And just, yeah, kept going the way things were. Interesting. So, I, I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what that means in terms of this particular story that we're talking about, but that's... But it's interesting to have in the background. Yeah. This very democratic country, you see. Yeah. Um, now, the complicity in the range of crimes, this is, you know, the things that they're touting is like um, trafficking and um, child pornography and things like that. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. But... 
these governments, they don't care about protecting kids. This is just a way to get in. Yeah. Um, it's a way to, uh, to hold, um, to threaten this company and to give, figuring out a way to give government access to the communications. It's really about the government's access. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you, I don't know if we covered it during the interview, but, um, if you go back and talk to Dr. Miller about whether the government cares about protecting kids, she'll tell you absolutely not. Yeah. Like that's never what this is really. She won't <laughs> tell you that. She'll tell you absolutely not. End of her quote <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I'm putting in her mouth. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that that's never the, the reason that they do any of this. They don't really care about the kids. No. Um, they care about having leverage to get what they want for the government. Yep. Exactly. Um, and then of course, if you put a back door on some sort of encryption, then the encryption it's useless. is, yeah, it's illusory then it's not really encryption at all. Yeah. Um, and beyond that, just the, you know, the, what I think is a, um, self-evident statement that if you have a way around or past encryption, that it's not really encryption, like a built in way around or past <laughs> encryption, that it's yeah. not encryption. Um, Whatever that method is, whether it's intended for government or not, it's potentially accessible by everyone. Exactly. So it just makes all of it less secure. Yep. Um, but this isn't the only one of these things that's going on. France is particularly bad. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff that we would have been told was only what authoritarian regimes in China and Russia and North Korea do. Yeah. But this is happening now in Western countries. Um, now I know that France doesn't have a free speech, um, guarantee like we do. In fact, I don't know that there is one in Europe. We might be, we might stand alone in that. Not that it means anything here either, though. Yeah. And um, there's other things going on in France in, in the same vein. Like, Rumble is illegal in France. They shut off... France shut off Rumble at the IP level. Really? Um, because they refused to remove Russian media from their platform. <sighs> yeah. Um, Brazil, uh, like, Rumble is... is um, has been deplatformed in Brazil as well, has been shut off. Uh, at the IP level um, because they refuse to censor content. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, um, X, I'm supposed to say formerly known as Twitter, aren't I? <laughs> well, I th I, at some point we have to drop that, right? I think so. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> We're just going to call it X from here on. We're done. Okay, good. <laughs> Twitter's over. Good. I'm tired. There's too many words. Yep. Um, X closed their offices in Brazil recently to protect their own employees from from being arrested. Oh wow. For the company refusing to censor content. That's wild. And and Brazilian authorities were threatening to arrest um not like basic staff, but your like higher level people at their Brazilian offices. Yeah. And so X just closed all their Brazilian offices. This is wild to me. Um government has real governments in general has really decided that that they have to control social media. And anytime they it's start... It's not just social media, it's the internet as a whole. Yeah. I mean, going well, back to Telegram... Yeah. yeah, going back to Telegram, the, you know, initially what they said essentially was that, um, that Telegram didn't provide appropriate moderation for the content. This is a private messaging app. Yeah, yeah. It's not even like content, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't used that. I mean, I think they do have like message boards and whatnot, but generally it's a private messaging thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, overall is my understanding. Yeah. I mean, it would be like, um, holding a uh, Verizon responsible for any phone calls that, that are made that talk about illegal activity. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it literally could indict or, uh, Indict's not really the right word there, but it's the first word that comes to mind, so we're going with it. Yeah. Um, every telecom company that does business in France. Yeah. I mean, there's some kind of illegal activity being communicated on every single platform. Yeah, but it's okay when those companies do it because they give government access. Well, that, yeah, that does seem that's, to be the difference, That's the right? difference. That's, that's the difference between t Telegram and the other ones is... Mm -hmm. And Telegram's like, no, you're not getting the access. Yeah. Orange um, uh, is the biggest telecom, I think, in France. Um, and that used to be the state-owned telecom. 
Oh yeah, we definitely not get any privacy on that. But they, the, the state divested. I don't remember fifteen years ago or something like that. Privatized oh, yeah. the whole thing. But okay. you, it does make you leave you wondering, like, how privatized really is it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, France is pretty socialist. Yeah. But even they determined that telecom couldn't be done by the government; that it was better off <laughs> privatized. Yeah, <laughs> it, it worked better. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I guess that maybe that is the difference. But by the letter of the law, mm. all these other companies are are just as um, just as guilty as Telegram. Oh, absolutely. Um, it just it blows this whole deal. Except blows. for the failure to provide government access yeah. to information yeah. part. Yeah, I mean but that's, like that's the, where the violation is. Yeah, all the complicity in these these ranges of crimes and the you know the cryptography stuff and so forth that would still apply to anybody who provides encryption. Yeah, um, and the you know complicity in all these crimes would uh, apply to anybody who allows communications. Yeah, I mean I think that's this that's just your classic drop as many charges as you can, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to scare these other companies. That's really what it's about. Um, because at the end of the day, I think that's, that's the real thing here. Yeah. Apparently the CEO of rumble was in France at the time this arrest happened and he left <laughs> and he left. And yes, smart. absolutely. Yeah. Um, got out of there. Didn't communicate anything until he got out of Europe. All right. I'm getting on the private jet out of here. Yeah. I hope y'all don't shoot it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a scary move though. Um, well, and what I was going to say a minute ago is like, we've lived in a world where the internet was truly free. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. pre, pre 2016 is kind of where I put it. Yeah. Um, pre Trump or Trump being president, mm -hmm. like we lived in a, you say whatever you wanted on the internet. Like, it didn't matter. Like, and, and that's the world we ought to be in. Yeah. Trump um, didn't do it. Trump was the trigger. Well, he was the trigger. Well, uh, among other things, Brexit yeah. was another part of it. Um, yeah. Certainly. Well, it, government it, definitely got wind that, that this was a problem. Yeah. And that there was really only one way to fix it, and it's to start plugging up the internet. Yeah, it's to go back to controlling information. They realized that they weren't controlling information as effectively because of the internet. Yeah. And so they had to fix that. And yeah. apparently the only way to fix that is to control the internet too. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the only way. Mm. And I don't know that that can ever be fully achieved, but they're working on it. Yeah. I, I mean, fear is the, is the mechanism. Like, like scare these CEOs and the people that control these, um, uh, what do you, well, I guess social media is yeah, what telecoms it is. is what I would telecoms, say. Like, yeah. No, yeah. you're right. That's, that's the proper, would be the proper term. Yeah, like scare them into submission. Mm -hmm. uh, internet service providers, telecommunications companies, messaging platforms, etc. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of amazing to see out of countries that consider themselves to be liberal democracies, though. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see where this goes from here, but these are the kind of things that that spread. Uh, if they are able to do it effectively, um, it'll bounce to some other parts of Europe. It'll come across the Atlantic to Canada, and then it'll be here. Yeah, yeah. And there's we've already seen that that words on a piece of paper isn't going to stop our government. Yeah, that's like I mean that's, that's just sure. <laughs> just remember that. Like, <laughs> well, um, moving back to Kamala, uh, she has at least given a little glimpse of some of her ideas of what she will do. I mean, who knows because she's been so flip floppy on everything, but yeah. um, she did give a speech on her economic plan and she talked about some things yeah. that she planned to do that I think are worth addressing. Um, the stuff that she copied from Trump or the other stuff, the other stuff, <laughs> the other stuff, <laughs> the other stuff. Um, the, I guess first one I actually wrote down a, Kamala, $25 to new home buyers. That's supposed to be 25 k Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not tw $25 wouldn't make much difference. Um, but yeah, 25000 to new home buyers to... Quite frankly, yeah. 25000 isn't making as much difference as it would have 10 years ago. Well, and it certainly won't if she actually does it. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is the real problem. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, if the problem mm. is that home prices are too high, then giving out a whole bunch of money is not going to help the situation. No, no. Then it just remember. increases demand for home homes, and the supply hasn't changed. Now she said some kind of vague thing about that she's going to um, increase the supply of homes that we, uh, you know, that we don't have enough homes and there will be more homes and whatever, but there's, I, I didn't, yeah, where's catch, the plan for that? Yeah. I didn't catch any <laughs> plan for that because she's not going to say what the plan is because the, the only plan possible for that is to get rid of regulation. And that's not popular with her. Well, not only is base. that not popular, there's no way she's doing that. Yeah. Like she's not doing that. Like she's not going to, I mean, that's just, that's not how, that's mm-hmm. not how their party is built. Yeah. Like even if they know that's the right answer, which they don't, I guarantee you they don't know that. Yeah. T- giving 25000 to new home buyers isn't going to incentivize that much more production of homes. Yeah. Um, the way you get more homes is by getting rid of zoning laws and so forth. Um, right. Getting rid of rent controls, getting rid of all these other things that disincentivize you. Get the government out of the way. Yeah. From, from producing more places for people to live. Um, just putting more money into it isn't going to help, especially because we don't have any money. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're only $34 trillion in debt to start with. Yeah. But it'll also, wh- what it does is, okay, so you have some people that are almost able to afford a home, yeah. but they can't quite. Yeah. And then you give them $25,000 towards a, a new home, or a home, it's not necessarily a new home, but yeah. you give them twenty five thousand dollars towards a home, and and now they feel like, oh, that's exactly what I needed. Now I can afford a home. I'm going to go out and buy a home. So how many more buyers, home buyers, have you now added to a market where there's still not enough homes? And even if you, like, even if you increase the demand and that does incentivize some home building, yeah. They're not up the next day. <laughs> right. You know, it takes ho- time to build a home. Now, I've seen them put some homes up pretty fast from time to time, but that's not common. Yeah. It usually takes a couple of months at least. I mean, the, I, as far as I've seen, the average is about six months. Yeah. I mean, give or take. Yeah. I mean, I've I've seen them get a home up in about a month. Yeah. Um. But, okay, six months, we'll say. That's yeah. a good number. Uh, In, in the meantime... What you've done is that you've increased the demand for a product without increasing the supply. And what does that do to price in our standard economics 101 supply demand charts? Yeah. Drives the price up. Has to. So now that $25,000 doesn't make as much of a difference. And everybody else has that. Has no, everybody else is less likely. To be able uh, to afford a home. Well, yeah. Yeah, because it went up again. Yeah. 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 So so the people that didn't need the 25000 or didn't get the 25000 that were planning to buy a home, now maybe they're not anymore. Yeah. Um, but you have maybe created a market. Now, this is all guesswork because you never know exactly how this stuff is going to play out. Yeah. But this seems like a pretty likely scenario to me. Um, you drive up home prices initially uh, by increasing the demand for homes. The price increase actually drives down demand. But before that happens, um, producers of homes have started building a bunch of new homes. Yeah. Because they see a demand out there that they need to meet in the future. But then when the homes are done, nobody buys them. (laughs) Yeah. Because they're too expensive and there's actually fewer home buyers now than there were before. Yeah. Because I bet it drives up prices more than 25K. Yeah. Yeah. so now you've got a bunch of unused homes, a bunch of capital that's been invested in something where you can't get any kind of return. Then people start declaring bankruptcy and closing stuff down. And that's how 2008 started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen this story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I looked at, so when I was house shopping, which was in 20, 2009, 2010, that, that general time period, we looked at just massive amounts of foreclosures, some of which were actually new construction foreclosures yeah. where like the house was pretty well done and the builder just like ran out of money and filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, then we were negotiating with the bank, you know, cause mm-hmm. the bank and the bank obviously doesn't want the house. Like they're mm-hmm. stuck with it, you know? Yeah. And not quite complete house. <laughs> not, like an almost done house. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's, it's, 
it's a wild scenario, but I mean, we've already seen this play out once. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole idea of just giving people, I mean, if, if you don't, if you think that the Kamala Harris plan to give people 25,000 is a good plan, look at student loan debt. Yeah. Because yeah, that's it's exactly the same thing. Th- it's the same thing. Like, I mean, I, cause, and we've talked about it on the podcast enough. We don't need to rehash it here, but like that, that is what you're proposing is, is exactly what we've already experienced through, um, student loans. Yeah. So federalizing of student loans, mm-hmm. I should say. Um, one of the other big ones was, uh, that she's going to stop that price gouging on groceries. Oh man. That, so that was out of everything that I've heard. That's the one that scares me the most because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell y'all something. I like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I like options. <laughs> yeah, and I like options. I don't want to wait in the bread line. Like, yeah. cause all I hear when you tell me price controls on food is that we're not going to have food. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just another word for setting price controls because price gouging in the grocery market isn't happening. No, the, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that price gouging doesn't exist. Price gouging does exist. Now, we've gone over it plenty of yeah, times in, in post-hurricane that. stuff that most things that are called price gouging is just a market price. Yeah. And yeah. that's the case here, too. Yeah. It's just a market price. Dude, and grocery stores have very low margins. Well, that's what I was fixing to say. As somebody that works in this industry, I promise you, like, the margins are thin. The, the, the grocery store up the road ain't causing the prices to go up. Yeah. The economy is causing the prices to go up. Well, printing a whole bunch of money is what did it, of course. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Now we get to print more to people to buy homes, but they won't be able to buy food. Yeah. But, and we've talked a lot about what price controls does on the supply side. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, on the consumer side. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to take maybe a little closer look at what it does on the, on the supply side. Okay. Um, now we've talked about that in terms of rent control, but, but I guess we've never really talked about it in terms of retail products. Yeah. Uh, and so let's say that you set a, um, a ceiling on prices of bread. Yeah. All right. So maybe the market rate for bread is, I don't know what the market, give me a number. I don't care. Four dollars. All right. So the market rate for bread is four dollars. And um, you set a ceiling, price ceiling at three fifty. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of people producing bread um, that are making good money off of that four dollar loaf. Yeah. But there's some people producing bread that aren't making that much off of that four dollar loaf. Yep. And maybe that making that loaf three fifty instead of four dollars means that some of those it's marginal enough. producers can no longer make a profit. Yeah. And these are going to be your smaller companies. Like, mm-hmm. so your big companies, like, yeah, they're doing all right off the, off the $4 number, mm-hmm. but the, the smaller guys aren't like they're struggling just because the, because the big guys trying to push them out. Yeah. Like that's the whole game anyway. Um, so where you're going with this is what ends up happening is those, the, it makes it a lot easier for those big companies to push out those smaller guys. The big companies didn't do it at all, actually. The government well, did. Well, the government did, but it makes it, but they're, mm-hmm. but the big guys are always trying to do that. Though. Yeah. So, well, your marginal producers, you can't continue a business at a loss. Yeah. Um, so those marginal producers, producers actually shut their doors and they stop producing bread. Yeah. Which means there's less bread on the market. Yeah. Now, now it's just your big guys, by the way. Mm -hmm. And of course, what that does to a market price when you reduce the supply without reducing the demand is the market price goes up, but you still have a ceiling. Yeah. Now, and they can only produce what they can can produce anyway. Yeah. So then the, the, the other side of that is that as, as a government, you've now created a scenario where there's less people getting bread. Yeah. Than there were before you imposed the price controls. <laughs> right. And the reason is because a bunch of marginal producers can't produce bread at less than three fifty a, a loaf. Yeah. Now, how do you fix this problem? You have to wait in line. Well, <laughs> to no. Get, to get you the got, bread. <laughs> you got to think like a government. Okay. All right. How do you fix this problem? Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of inputs that go into producing bread. Yeah. And for these marginal producers, those costs are too high. Yeah. So now you have to fix prices on things going into 
bread. You have to fix the price of grain. You have to fix the price of labor, maybe. Yeah. You have to fix the price of various other things, right? So now yeah. you fix prices on those. But what about the inputs that go into them? Yeah. Because you've created the same problem just higher up the chain. Yeah. So now there's places that the, the price of grain is fixed. They can no longer produce grain at a profit, so they stop producing grain. Well, how do you fix that problem? <laughs> you know, and so it keeps on going up the chain. And eventually what you have to what you have to have to actually solve all of these problems is yeah. that you have to have a market wide price fixing scheme. The yeah. government decides what the price of everything will be, who will sell to who, and so forth. And we've seen over and over and over again that this doesn't work. No. That there's no throughout human history, this <laughs> yeah. it bears this out. Like there's yeah. just no way for the government to control this without creating shortages. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it can't be done. So what ends up happening is that you don't have lower price bread on the shelves. You got no bread on the shelves. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're in bread lines. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like that's, that's where this, this goes. And it's just, it's been proven so many times that you wonder how some politician can get up there and say it again. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the, uh, you would think even uttering those words would just be political mm -hmm. suicide. But because like, it should be. Yeah, but Walls said one man, one man's socialism is another man's neighborliness or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that is what he said. But yeah. and it's because you can't get up there and say socialism. Because even yeah. in this country where socialism has become way more popular, people still like intuitively or experientially know that to steal Owen Benjamin's line, um, socialism always ends in starvation and genocide. Yeah. yeah. There's only one direction <laughs> it goes. <laughs> yeah. But in th this comment about one man's socialism is another man's neighborliness, like how ridiculous is that? Okay. I can, I can point out one really huge difference between socialism and neighborliness. All right. Consent. That's probably the right word. Yeah, that would Consent. be the word. That is it, yeah. So, I mean, my neighbor may come over here and pull weeds out of my garden or whatever. Yeah. And if I think that's great, that's great. And if I don't want him to, I can tell him, don't come pull weeds out of my yard anymore. Yeah. But I can't stop the government from doing that. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's not the same thing. If yeah. I don't want the government to do some to do something for me, yeah. I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're going to do it for me whether <laughs> if, I want it or not. If my neighbor comes in my yard and starts messing around, I can pull a gun on him. Yeah, you but, can pull a gun but, on a government but, agent but, too. But, but, but if a cop comes in my yard and does that, well, it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you can, obviously, but mm -hmm. we know how that story ends. Yeah. I, I just thought for a moment of, um, there's a scene in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, where they go on this guy's property. You know, you remember this is set in the depression okay. or dust bowl or one of them. I don't know. It's a poor time though. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they go on the property and the kid shoots at him with a rifle <laughs> and he's like, you ain't the tax man, are you? Cause my daddy told me to shoot the tax man. <laughs> shoot the tax man. Right. <laughs> oh, it was a different time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Times have changed. Can't get away with that shit anymore. Nope. Oh, well. Um, Shucks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, one man's socialism is another man's neighborliness is the most ridiculous statement of this uh, campaign so far. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe of many campaigns. Yeah. Because it's not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I can refuse nice things from my neighbor. Yeah. Can't refuse them from Mr. Government, then. Nope. Um, well, that's all I've got. Do you have anything else you uh, wanted to add? can't think of anything. I did feel like there was something else we wanted to discuss, but um, it's going to be a wild ride. This election is going to be like, we're, we're getting, it's getting real now. We're almost at September here. Yeah. It's crazy times. So, um, this is a, this is a strange time to be alive. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, we're seeing some, we're seeing some real changes moving forward. But like I said, I don't think that, the coalitions aren't built on some kind of shared ideology and we may, I mean, we may see some more what we would perceive as libertarianism. I mean, obviously like one of the things with Tulsi and RFKJ is that there has been an, I think an, um, an intensified skepticism of government action from them that they 
probably didn't have as much RFK yeah. J has some skepticism <laughs> government Tulsi less so yeah um years ago uh but I, I don't and I, I think that that this that side of the political spectrum at this point we you know we we're saying it's the people that were censored and the people versus the people that weren't really yeah. um so I th I think that that side of the of this political realignment is generally more skeptical of government. Yeah. Um, I mean that is a feature, but it's not like it's not what's pulling them together in the same in in the form of an ideology. Yeah. It's just a, a disgust with the way things are, and yeah. so I I don't think that that really pushes our message forward in a in a productive way. Well, that's why we've got to be kind of leading the conversation or at least be part of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't think that we have the ability to really lead it, but we are mm -hmm. we are definitely part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that Trump came to see us says that much. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing, like I say, because we don't know where where things go the next by next cycle, mm -hmm. like, because Trump definitely isn't going to be running. Um like that, th his movement has to go somewhere. Yeah. And, and I still think that that's a very open question as far as where it goes. Um, I'm not saying it just like falls into the LP's lap. No, it definitely won't. But well, it could, if we could, well, parts we could, of it could. Yeah. Uh, we I could think facilitate most, that. The, the, the problem with Trump's movement is that there's a significant portion of Trump's movement that's only politically active because of Trump. That's true. I mean, that is true. And like, so when it's, Trump's it's gone, they just go back to the homes and farms yeah. and whatever. I don't think that they go back to the... They're not going back to Mitt Romney, though. No, they're not going to the Republicans, and they're not going yeah. to the Democrats, but I don't think that means they're coming to us. I think that they drop out again. You think they just, like, fall by... Well, I mean, Trump's already told them, like, they only have to vote one more time. That's right. <laughs> Didn't he mean that there weren't going to be any votes after this? Though? That's what I've been told by <laughs> the media. What, that's what media told me. That's what yeah. TV told me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah. Interesting. So, um, I, I'm pretty sure what he meant was sarcasm was gonna, doesn't come through very well in audio. <laughs> yeah, that's he bad. was he's he's going to fix everything, and we won't have to worry about it. But, yeah. But that's so. One more thing before we kind of close out. That's mm -hmm. what scares me the most, though, is because. Even if Trump wins this election and follows through with everything he wants to do, which both of those are kind of dicey. One, that yeah. he wins. <laughs> and the second part is really dicey, that he follows through with half of what we would want him to. Mm -hmm. um, but even if both of those things are the case, I mean, history has kind of shown us, or like more recent American history, is that like w the the left always wins. Like they through they just it just takes a while. Like they're so persistent and it, it, it's very scary to me as far as like with the censorship things and that type of stuff. Like we're, we're, it's like we're fighting a losing battle here. Like nothing we do is ever gonna like, like if we, if Trump wins, yeah, that buys us four more years. Yeah. But, but then what's after that? Like, can, can we really defeat this, this push? Um, and I, like I say, it's, I don't, I don't want to be all negative about it, but mm -hmm. that does kind of feel like the reality. Yeah, the left is better organized than the right. Yeah. Um, well, they tend to win these things over time. Like, we didn't... I mean, the fact that um, Trump is an 80s Democrat, till, and now he's like a far-right Republican, tells you everything you need to know, and he ain't changed that much. I mean, you go back to the clips of him in the 80s and 90s, he's saying the same things he's saying right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just what it is. So, I don't know. I yeah, hate be, it I, ebbs and flows. It's it does. Um, the I think for the most part, the pushes to the left that remain are positive. Yeah, like how do you mean? I mean, I, I think that you know acceptance of alternative lifestyles is a good is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I think promotion of alternative lifestyles isn't. But we're at promotions. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think that part will stick. You don't think it sticks? No, it I don't think not. that part. I mean, sticks. I, don't, I think I do think you're right about that. Like, I, I because I think a move towards liberalism in the traditional sense, not yeah. the way it's used today, yeah. um, is generally positive. And I, I think that the the 
the parts of that that remain, the leftward movements, the progression that remains a part of the society generally is positive. Yeah. Um, I think that they, they propose a whole lot more than what actually sticks. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the game, though. That's the mm -hmm. game they're playing. That's, yeah. You know. But I, I think that the, the results of that has been, on the whole, a, a good thing, like if they would just stay out of economics. Yeah. I mean, well, but, but, but you but know, you're the, talking about that. This the scary part, because the mm -hmm. two things I worry about is the economics and the censorship. Yeah. So I don't think the censorship can stay that you can only, you can't put it back in the bottle. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, every time that they shut one of these, um, big companies down or, or shut down speech on one of these big platforms, another one will two or three will pop up yeah. that are alternatives to that. Um, I, I think that the, I mean, that's there's, definitely there's the hope. some level where a business owner understands that they can only restrict what their clients do to a certain degree before they don't have any clients anymore. Well, and that's always what I fascinated mean, me about Facebook, because whenever mm -hmm. all of this started and Facebook started this whole deal where um, they were they were like suspending you or like like, you know, punishing you. I was mm -hmm. like, dude, that's not going to last long because people are just going to leave Facebook. Yeah. But that ain't happened. I well, mean, plenty of people have left Facebook. It it hasn't coalesced into another similar platform. That's all. Yeah, that's I mean, probably fair. But the I, I look at the difference between Twitter before and Twitter now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Twitter was doing a lot of censorship, and their the activity on Twitter had slowed. Yeah. Um, and Musk took over, and there were plenty of people on the left said, "Well, I'm not using Twitter anymore," and well, so be it. But, yeah. um, but on the whole, I think that that Twitter has gained ground, not lost it. Yeah. Well, and I think that the numbers would bear that out. So, yeah. um, I don't know. Interesting times we live in. Yeah. So Beware authoritarianism. Yes. <laughs> yes. Find it at every corner. All right. Um, well, let's wrap up. Uh, so, uh, as always, you can follow us on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> follow us on all the social medias right? yeah not all of them because <laughs> I, I only have so much time in my life but um yeah facebook um youtube podbean uh like and share comment subscribe um you can always leave um uh, you can always email me at michael at the liberty .com or dm us on any of those platforms um i don't know i think that's most of the things yeah Probably looking at next Friday, next week. Okay. Football season starts on Thursday. That's the reason? That is the reason. <laughs> so. Okay. Here we go. Oh, man. I'm sure um, some of our listeners are ready for some football. I know I am. That, that's the reason, though, that we can't do our podcast at a normal time? Well, the normal time just happens to coincide with football. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'll contact them, see if we can get their schedule changed. <laughs> yeah, you do uh, that. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> okay. If you move your football game to Friday, that would really yeah. help our podcast. <laughs> I wield a surprising amount of influence. You might be surprised. Well, I'll be waiting. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anyway, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.